Have you ever been sitting in class and thought, I could have found all these facts on Google? Or if somebody just gave me the summary to this 85 slide long PowerPoint yap session, I wouldn't have to waste my time. Want to get better grades without breaking the rules? Here's how ChatGPT can help you succeed in college. I'm a real teacher who actually shows my students how to use AI and ChatGPT in my own classes. And I want to help you understand the ways that you can use it in yours. AI is really the elephant in the room in education. We all know it's there. You've probably seen it. You've played around with it, but you may not understand where do I start and how can it help me do better as a college student? If you're lucky enough to have an awesome professor or teacher who knows what they're talking about and share those with you, then you're probably not looking for this video. But if you're like most students today who say, my teachers don't give me any instructions on it, or my school tries to block it, or I don't know how it can help, but I want to learn. You've come to the right place. I have some tips for you to use ChatGPT that aren't cheating. To get started, make sure you have ChatGPT and you can use the free version. It's great and it's always getting better. You want to have the app on your phone. If you have a Mac computer, you can now get a desktop app and download that so you don't have to use it in a browser. The other big thing is make sure that you log in. If you just go to the website and use it in your browser, ChatGPT will let you use it without logging in. The problem with that is it won't save anything you've done and you can't go back and find it later. So make sure you have the app on your phone, not some rip off different version. Don't pay for any of those apps. If you're paying for them, it's not the real ChatGPT. If you have a Mac computer, you can get it on your desktop. At the time of recording, Windows PCs can't download the app itself. And then make sure that you log in. You can use your Apple, your Google, or your Microsoft account to log in. The next tip for you is simple. You have to use it for 30 minutes a day. It's not a cheat code. It's not an instant shortcut. It's a tool. And how do you get good at using any tool? You have to practice with it. The other thing that's unique about ChatGPT is it changes, and it changes quickly. If you haven't banked reps, if you haven't practiced using it, if you haven't gotten good at prompting, you're going to be further behind than you already are. You just need some reps. What are some ways that you can get practice reps that are low risk? If you're not sure what's cheating and what's not, then don't use it for schoolwork at first. That's okay. Here are some ways that you can use it besides generating your schoolwork. Let's say you want to start a new healthy habit. Go into ChatGPT on your phone or in the browser. You're logged in like we talked about in the first tip. And tell it what habit you want to establish. I want to eat healthier or I want to stop eating pizza or I want to do 30 minutes of cardio a day but I hate running. What are some ways I can build that as a habit? You may not know, but you're getting good at the fundamentals like giving it feedback and revising and context without having to worry about this is writing my essay for me or I'm cheating in my college English class. Other ways you can use it, have it help you review. Type in the study guide or scan it in and say, give me 30 questions based on this. Another good way you can use it that's low risk, that's not generating schoolwork for you, is you can give it a question bank and say, give me 10 more questions like this. I had a challenging math problem. Give me five more like that and walk me through the steps of how to solve it. These aren't cheating. And what you're really doing is you're getting practice on the platform and 30 minutes a day is what it takes to get good at this tool. The next tip for you is how should you view ChatGPT? I went to college. I still take college classes. If you wanted a shortcut to getting your work done faster and better, there are essentially two ways. You can go to the tutor center and get help from somebody, a teacher's aide, a graduate assistant, or you can go to your buddy and pay him and say, do my work for me. I want you to think about ChatGPT as being like your teacher's aide or your English center tutor. They're not going to write your essay for you. If you go down to the English center and say, I have to write this essay, it's five pages long, it's on Shakespeare, here's a blank piece of paper and a pen, write it for me, they're going to laugh. But if you went to the Tudor Center and said, I have this essay on Shakespeare, I don't know where to start. Can you help me come up with an outline? They're going to say, yeah, cool. Here's how we can structure that. That's not cheating. If it's not cheating with the Tudor, then why would it be cheating if you used a software like ChatGPT? The answer is it's not. So you need to start to view ChatGPT 
as your tutor. That's the mindset that you have. Not your buddy that you pay with cases of beer to write your essay for you. That's cheating, and that's stupid, and you're going to get busted, and you're going to waste all of your tuition money. So what are some ways that the tutor or the teacher's aide could help me? Develop an outline. Even for a project, it doesn't have to be a paper. Start with a list. Give me a bullet, bullet, bullet outline for this project or assignment that I have. One that a lot of people don't know ChatGPT can do is help me with research. Find sources. Give me a link to those sources so I can verify them. You wouldn't believe some grad student in the tutor center if he said, oh, trust me, this is a good source. You can quote it. You'd want to look it up for yourself. You can use ChatGPT in the same way. Pro tip. ChatGPT can even help you format your sources when you go to do a Works Cited page. Another way you can use ChatGPT, like your English center tutor or your graduate assistant, is say, hey, explain this concept to me. If you are struggling in science class with understanding a concept, you could stay after class and ask the professor or the grad assistant, could you explain that to me? They say, yeah, here's one way to think about it. You can use ChatGPT the same way. And if you're not, you should start doing that. The last way and one of the most powerful ways you can use ChatGPT is, hey, give me some feedback. I have an outline. I have a paragraph. I have an answer. What do you think of this? Give it some context and say, you're an English professor. Here's the assignment. Here's the rubric. I wrote this. Can you give me some feedback? That's not cheating. If you went to the tutor center and had an English paper all written by yourself and said, can I get some feedback? They go, yeah, I think you're at a B minus and here's one, two, three things that you're missing. Go back to your dorm room, add those, turn it in. That's not cheating at the tutor center. Why would it be cheating if you use ChatGPT? To recap, you need the ChatGPT app on your phone. Log into it in the browser on your computer or if you're on a Mac, download the app, it's better than a browser. If you aren't logged in, it won't save your progress. So just use your Google, Microsoft, or Apple email and log into the free version. It's better than losing your work and not being able to come back to stuff later. How am I going to use this? Just start finding ways that are low risk and not going to get you kicked out of school to get 30 minutes a day. That's what it takes to get good with this. That's what I've been doing for about a year and a half since it came out. View it as a teacher's aid. View it as instead of walking down to the tutor center to get feedback on this English essay, it's two in the morning and it's due at 8 a.m. I don't have time to go to the English center because I procrastinated. That's okay. Use ChatGPT to get feedback. Use it to give you an outline. Use it to help you understand an analogy better. Those aren't cheating if you used a human for that. So it's not cheating if you used a piece of software. If you want to use it to say, write my paper for me, you're an idiot and you're going to get kicked out of school. Plus, ChatGPT isn't good at that. Your professor won't even need to run it through turnitin.com to know you used AI to write this. Big fat F at the top of your paper. So start to view it as a teacher's aide or a grad assistant that's there in your pocket helping you anytime you have questions instead of, hey, my buddy who writes it for me and I buy him a pizza once a week because he's good at English and I'm not. That's a terrible way to use it and that's not how you should view ChatGPT. I have a live class on Thursday nights. It's free. It's for students to learn detailed strategies like these to use ChatGPT in school without cheating. There's a link below in the description. You can also find a link to my website where I do AI tutoring. I have an AI intro course for people who want to get started and get good at using these tools in school so that they can help you raise your grades, lower your stress without cheating. I'm Aaron McKelkey, your AI teacher. Make sure you subscribe for more ways to help crush it in college with ChatGPT and other AI tools.